Hey guys and dolls and welcome to my first ever Q&A. Um, I know I still sound a little bit sick from my last makeup tutorial but bear with me, I'm getting better. I'm healing! So as you may be able to tell from the title, this is a back to school Q&A. So an education related Q&A. This is actually a collab with three other Irish YouTubers who I absolutely love. You may know them, you may not know them. All of us are taking something related to going back to school and doing our own video on it. So because I have a degree in education, which I'm just graduating this year, like I'm just about to graduate from, I wanted to do something where I could talk about study tips and all that kind of stuff. But the other girls, and they are Makeup by Saz, Dramatic Mac, and also Faces by Grace 23. Each of those is taking their own beauty related kind of thing for this collab. So I'm gonna leave the links to all their videos in the description box and I really hope that you can subscribe to their channels as well. Some really great Irish personalities and yeah, so we all just kind of wanted to come together and do something for you guys that would help you out at this time of year. I myself am dying to see Sarah, Ashling and Grace's videos and yeah, let's dive right into this one. So I posted up about this on Instagram and Twitter. A few of you asked me questions that weren't related to, you know, education and stuff like that, but um, because this is like a back to school one, I'm only gonna be answering the education related questions. Don't worry, because I will definitely do a much more general, personal, Q&A for my next one, so for like part two. I'm gonna answer as many of your questions as I can in this video, and I better start and shut up waffling. Michaela Henry asks, what is your favorite thing about your course? My favorite thing about my course, which was education and training, was a Bachelor of Science degree, Honours degree in education and training, and my favorite thing about it was that the skills that I took from it are very applicable to everyday living. They're the kind of skills that, for instance, help me to do YouTube, help me to be able to present in front of large groups of people, enable me to uh, communicate with people well and manage my time, design things, use the internet properly. Just so much about my course that I love. The main thing is that everything I learn from it is going to give me a better life. Lisa Dawn asks, how do you manage stress? I have a job and tons of schoolwork to do. I'm ready to explode. So how I manage stress, school related stress, I am the first to admit that there were certain points during my education that I did not manage stress very well and I turned into a crazy demon monster lady who would scream at her boyfriend and throw things at the wall and slam doors and cry. <laughs> but um, I did get a lot better at it toward the end of my degree and I thank a lot of that to journaling so, you know, writing down my thoughts and just getting everything onto paper. I encourage all of you to journal if you don't. It doesn't have to be written like JK Rowling. Just use it as a way to kind of vent everything you're feeling. It can be completely private, you don't need to show anybody. And it can be messy as feck. Also, walking, I would ensure that I always either went for a long walk or even a, a run. I went through a period of doing a lot of exercise during my degree and I found that that was a great way to kind of vent, but especially walking. Walking is my favorite exercise, hands down, and I would go for long walks. Um, I'm lucky enough that I live in a really nice area and I live near the beach and stuff, but we would just go like walking in the forest or even just walking down to the shops and back with my iPod in and some great music. Walk and not think about anything, just blank my mind. And then it would let lots of other thoughts come in that were unrelated to my schooling and stuff like that. So that really helped me to calm down and put things in perspective. Finally, yoga is such a great way to manage your stress. Seriously, if you do not do yoga, start doing yoga now, even like five or 10 minutes a day. And there's a ton of YouTube videos that are brilliant, like yoga routines that are very easy for beginners. Yasmin Deer asks, any leaving cert tips? I'm already stressed out. Okay, so the leaving cert is like the final exams that you go through in like secondary school here. So that would be kind of like high school in America type thing. I know the school systems are all different, but I was around 17 years old doing my leaving cert and it's like the big exams and it's built up to be like the biggest thing of your entire life and it's the end of the world if you do badly and all this crap. Guys, when I was in school, right up until my final year in secondary school, I was a nerd, a swat. I was straight A's, always did my homework. I loved doing homework, but in my final year, I kind of stopped caring a, a lot about school. I had a boyfriend and my nana passed away, my grandmother, and it was the hardest time of my entire life. And 
I really struggled with coping with that and stuff so I kind of started skipping off school and I turned into a little bit of a tearaway like not really bad but I just wouldn't go to school I wouldn't do my homework I wouldn't study and this is all coming up to the end of school and say for instance my mock exams I did really well in and then I got my leaving cert results and they were terrible way less than anticipated I thought I was screwed I really thought that that was the end of my life and the end of the world and ended up working in a shop for a year and a half because I believed into that nonsense that the leaving cert is the be all end all and it really isn't I then did a PLC that enabled me to get into third level education got into an honours degree and ended up coming like top of my class three years in a row. I got a 1.1 bachelor's degree and that's from somebody who did bad in the Leaving Cert. So first tip is do not stress about the Leaving Cert. Stress is the worst thing that you can do when it comes to school or education because none of it is worth getting stressed about. None of it, no matter what anyone says, no matter what your parents say and your teachers say, like they just want you to do well, they want the best for you and stuff so they will say things like that trying to encourage you but oftentimes it doesn't come off very encouraging at all and it just freaks people out so yeah number one tip don't stress second tip is if you can get as organized as possible as soon as possible and just try and keep up with your homework throughout the year don't leave it all to the last minute if possible and um, I know some people work better under pressure I certainly do but a tip to manage the stress would certainly be to take it in small portions rather than leave yourself with all this crazy stuff to learn because the leaving cert is very difficult you have a lot of different subjects there that your brain has to try and take it all on board the education system is actually trying to change that here in Ireland because currently the leaving cert is just like a memory test and that is not the best way for people to learn yeah, definitely just try and stay on top of things and don't stress Anna Helena Photos asks, if you had the power, what would you change about formal education and what do you like about it that maybe many people dislike? So linked to that last question, what I would change about the formal education system is the fact that a lot of the exams are just memory based exams, people just cram in all this knowledge, go in and spew it out onto the paper like word vomit, like farting out your mouth all over the page. Whoa! I would scrap that and just bring in a lot of continuous assessment and a lot of more group learning and the teacher needs to be more like a guide rather than you know someone who stands up in front of the class and tells everyone what to do the teacher needs to just kind of facilitate the learning something I like about education that many people dislike um, that's a tough one I'd probably go with the fact in colleges and universities like big huge lecture halls and having lots of people in them. Most people hate that but I actually really love it and um, I think it's amazing to get a huge bunch of people into a lecture hall because especially with certain types of degrees the debates that can get going and the amount of different opinions you'll get and also it's great for like if you're shy when you're in a big huge lecture hall you're not really expected to have to talk to all those people but it is good to be put into those kind of situations where you are around a lot of people. I had very bad social anxiety and stuff going into college and I found that that actually helped me with that. Nazich97 asks please could you give some tips on how to get through school with an eating disorder and tied to that Meat 6 asks did you have your eating disorder in school if so how did you cope? Okay so these two questions are very similar and very personal Um. The so second question, no, I did not have my eating disorder in school. I actually developed that while I was, towards the end of when I was working in the shop after school. And then I kind of had that through the start of college. So I guess that's kind of similar, um, school and college. So if you're talking about college, I did have it through college. Tips on how to get through it with an eating disorder. Um, my tips on that would be more aimed at tips on how to overcome the eating disorder not how to just get through school with an eating disorder because that's basically accepting oh I have an eating disorder and I'm gonna have to do school and I'm not gonna do anything about the eating disorder that needs to be your main priority and most schools pretty much all schools I think um, and universities have counseling services and people that you can go and talk to to get started on the road to recovery and that would be the one thing that I would urge anybody to do because I don't think that anyone should become complacent in an eating disorder and just let it unravel and 
let it get worse and go try and go through school with it because it's awful I several times ate my lunch sitting in the bathroom and I would like bring in my little packed lunches that were all healthy and sometimes like a binge would kind of start while people were around me and I'd get real panicky and then I'd like leave college or skip a few lectures to go binge somewhere I wish I had addressed it sooner so that would be my main advice for that I know it can be extremely difficult admitting to something like that but that is the way to recovery and I just wouldn't endorse, or I wouldn't encourage somebody to try and go through school without getting to the bottom of why they have an eating disorder and overcoming it because it's completely possible for absolutely anyone, you just have to want to. Best way to go about that is to take baby steps with absolutely everything. Don't You don't have to be scared and face all your fears straight away, just take everything in the tiniest little bite-sized things. Like say for example when I was given up kind of drinking fizzy drinks. Um, originally when I was really overweight I started I went from fizzy drinks to diet fizzy drinks which are also bad then I went from diet fizzy drinks to like fizzy water with like fruits and stuff in it then I went from that to like tea and like green teas and things like that and coffee and all that kind of stuff and then I went to like water and it, like it was a long process I didn't do it like in a day or a week it took like a year habit forming yes Caitlin Ryan asks what is your favorite makeup product I'm guessing you mean school makeup product and for that it would definitely be a very natural BB cream like a BB cream the exact same shade as your skin that blends in completely and doesn't leave oxidation on your skin and doesn't leave like little orange streaks you know what I'm saying along the jawline something really really natural for school and also a brown mascara that doesn't clump because you can't get away with that in school so don't allow makeup Poo Jacks 3 <laughs> Poo <laughs> asks what is uni life like is it more in depth than A levels are universities strict okay universities are not strict um, you have a lot more independence in university, you have a lot of responsibilities and you have nobody holding you accountable in university. Um, your lecturers are not going to chase you up for your homework, they're not going to make sure that you're doing your work. Oftentimes they won't even get to know your name because there's so much students. So it's so important to learn time management and self-management and stuff like that early on in university. Um, it's amazing having that freedom coming out of school and that is the main part that a lot of people enjoy, especially with their social life in college. It's fantastic. And the work, yes, is a lot more in depth. I found my um, university exams and assignments a lot more difficult because it's a higher standard than school. However, it's so specific. So if you're doing a course on something, it's not like a big, broad, general, curriculum it's very very specific so it's a lot more interesting if you pick a degree that you're passionate about and that you like so I was doing education so we were touching on things like psychology and sociology and philosophy and loads of different types of things they all did tie in together in the end and yeah I loved it even though it was quite difficult blue haired chim Maria, I think I'm saying that right. What was your thesis about and how long did it take to complete? Oh, and what do you hope to achieve with your degree? Like what kind of job? So my thesis, I actually vlogged like loads during university and I have lots of videos that I filmed while I was in university and I vlogged myself handing in my thesis and everything and lots when I was writing it because a lot of my subscribers were involved in my thesis. It was about YouTube as an educational tool and you know looking at the potential in YouTube for language learning and stuff but it was so much fun to write and it was and um, I got an A like I got a first a very high mark and was delighted with it in terms of what I want to achieve with my degree and um, I want to be a lecturer myself one day that is my dream job you know lecturing in psychology and also I'd love to write a book and be a published author and have a few books written, non-fiction and fiction. I love writing so much, so you never know. Sure, Jesus, I will leave that down the line. Anya D asks, what are your tips with staying organized and studying in school? My form of study was organized chaos. I had crap all over the place. My room was a bomb shelter. I had stacks of paper, stacks of books, piles of shite. Stuff, stuff just thrown all over my room and when I was working and writing essays and stuff I'd often have vlogs playing in the background, I'd have YouTube videos on the go, telly on the go, music on the go, lots of noise, everyone in the house, but that is how I learned my best. That was my happy study zone area and every single person has their own 
individual learning style. I worked best under pressure, I worked best in a pile of crap. I was like the little crazy lady at the end of the movie, Labyrinth, with all the shit. That was me. <laughs> but how I stayed organized in terms of what I needed to do was I made lists and I sometimes did this in notebooks and copy books and sometimes I did it in Word documents on my laptop and I would always save them onto a memory stick in case my laptop spontaneously combusted one day but I would keep them all, all the lists and I would put them in order of priority so say I needed, like some people will keep a diary with the days and stuff which is a better way and I would have a big list and the top one would be what was due the soonest going down to like the least important so I learned how to prioritise through lists. Maraid X asked any tips for not getting distracted on your phone and social media etc. Well in when I was actually in school school there wasn't really social media at all like even mobile phones were so new when I was in secondary school that's how old I am and how quickly the world is changing and technology is taking over. In university I definitely understand with the social media and getting distracted because many people would be sitting there with their phones like this on the go and when you're sitting behind someone and you can just see the the light and the flash on their phone coming up it's, it's so distracting you can see what they're looking at on Facebook you know all their friends names nose hairs the color of their cat's arse it's just all there to see and that's very distracting I just made a conscious effort and decision to not take out my phone in class um, sometimes I did because I would get bored. I'd turn off your phone. Um, if you don't want to go on it, just turn it off. And if your friends are going on theirs, just try as hard as you can to just zone them out. Claire Skin asked two questions. I love you, Claire. What is the best way to manage making videos, uploading whilst going to college? I love you, Claire. Um, so in terms of this, I honestly don't know how I managed my first year because my YouTube channel, I only started it about a little bit over a year ago at the start of um, my final year and I have like vlogs during all that period of time and stuff but my channel exploded while I was in university and I was going through a lot of personal stuff as I've addressed in a previous video, um, a lot of personal life stuff and all that stuff, jazz, love is a bitch. Um, and it was a really hard time and but I knew I wanted it so badly and I just watch all these girls who it's their career and they do all this amazing stuff and I wanted it and I had I had it in my head I was like I want my channel to reach people I want to get my message out there I want to do this let's do this and I would just make time for it no matter how much work I had to do no matter how many parties I had to go to that week I would make time to upload and there was a period of time where things got too hard on me and I took a two month break from YouTube and I somehow went from 4,000 subscribers to 25,000 subscribers in that period of time and I now have 110,000 subscribers like it's crazy so yeah I was just trying to ensure that the videos I was making were videos that people would watch and people would look up and yeah I wasn't able to upload as often back then as I do now. I would just have my heart set on being consistent enough and uploading every single week. I would plan out my videos, I would plan out exactly when I had to do each thing like with the little lists I was talking about a while ago in my Word documents I did the exact same thing for videos. Also how do you keep on top of skincare at exam time or when workload gets stressful? That was always very high on my priority list simply because if my skin was really 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 bad I would be even more stressed out and I just wanted to really manage my stress to enable me to do all the things that I was doing so um, even then my skin broke out like crazy like you guys know I showed in my sunny clear review video how bad my acne got during my thesis it really did explode all along my jaw I just tried not to get stressed about it my skincare routine is very quick, it literally takes less than 5 minutes at night and I have a very tiny skincare routine in the morning, I literally just wash the face with a little body shop wash and put on a little moisturiser but I would often put on a honey face mask and leave it all day when I was studying, I would just sit there with honey on my face all day because that would calm down my breakouts and I did a whole video about my honey face mask. The Beast Unleashed asked where is the best place to do your homework? The best place to do your homework is wherever you feel the most comfortable. Some people lie in bed doing their homework, some people lie down on the floor on their front doing their homework, some people will sit on the, the sitting room floor with the TV on, some people do it on the couch, in the kitchen, at a desk. I could never work at a desk, I would always like sit on my bed, kind of 
hunched down with my books all over the place. That's where I felt good and um, the odd time if I was doing it in college, I would do it in the library. Cause when I was there, I was like, this is get down to business time. I need to have an essay done by tomorrow. Um, but yeah, just wherever you feel the most comfortable. Don't do it where people tell you you should be most comfortable. Do it where you know you will find it easier to do the work. Kayla asked, was it hard to juggle a social life and a college life at the same time? I struggled hugely with this in my first three years when I was in my PLC in the first couple of years of my degree I had no social life really I was kind of going to class and coming home and spend time with my boyfriend and cooking and going to bed and that was it that was my life and in final year I met some people who dragged me full force into the social side of college and all the events and all of the you know society stuff and I just got extremely involved in final year and that was the busiest time of my life. I was doing loads of social stuff, I was doing loads of college work, and I was doing YouTube, and I still was able to manage it because, I think predominantly because I was over my eating disorder, so that wasn't eating up all my time, and I wasn't just sitting there being insecure all the time. I had brain space to actually focus on stuff, a <laughs> fluff, focus on stuff that mattered to me. So yeah, it was hard to adapt to, but I encourage you, hugely Kayla to get really into it in your first year make loads of friends from different degrees not just from your degree and also in college the people who in school would be considered like the nerdy people or the swats or the lick arses to the teachers they're usually the cool people in college and they're the people who are really intelligent they're not into like getting locked and making a show of themselves they're they're really passionate about being activists and stuff like that and they're the people who are on all the nights out having a laugh dancing away happy as Larry be one of those people okay so guys I have been talking for the last half an hour my voice is gonna fall out my throat I hope you found that interesting and if you stuck around till this point leave a comment saying I'm a deadly badass bowl of marshmallows thanks a million for watching guys and yeah I'll do another Q&A video in a few weeks time